long ago in a living room very much like yours. Two women made up a podcast on how movies link up to each other, and they called it Six Degrees of Feature Film. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Six Degrees of Feature Film podcast. I am Magic Mike, also known as Brienne, also known as the Miss Movies. Hey, guys, I'm Stacey Howard, hey. a.k.a. a welder and a dancer. Welder and a dancer. Yes. I like it. Lots you of could people do, have that combo. You know. <laughs> they do. They do. Guess what? Today, what? we have a special guest. <gasps> Yay. <gasps> Yay. Sasha Pro Raver is here. And oh she gosh. is a steel town girl on a Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. Yes. This is going to be so fun. I oh my know. Gosh. I just want to point out that she's wearing a shirt that says dirty on it, mm -hmm. and I'm into it. I'm a little turned on right now. It's a little dirty dancing yeah. homage because that's mm -hmm. what we're going to be talking about, I think, later. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is Spoilers. that coming up later? Spoilers. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> we have a lot of dance movies today. Okay, so here's how our podcast goes for those that are listening for the first time it is called six degrees of feature film hey hi welcome hey, we're glad you're here what um and we take one film and then we show how six other films link up to it so we talk about a total of seven films and sometimes more depending on what tangents we go on <laughs> so that happens a lot <laughs> it does today our feature film is flash dance yes. Woo! Woo! one of my all-time favorites this is why we're doing this and I'm this so is happy. why we asked you to come on the show for yes. flash dance because we Hello. know that you love it it came out april 15th 1983 so happy tax day guys oh yay. <laughs> oh you need something to celebrate that's, that's right uh, it's about a pittsburgh woman with two jobs as a welder and an exotic dancer Whoa. and wants to get into ballet school based on kind of a true story. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Maureen. <laughs> really? I think her name yes. is like Maureen Mulder or something. Uh, she was a welder and she was an exotic dancer. She sold her life rights for like 2300 bucks and the what? movie made $150 <laughs> yeah. million. Yep, dollars. Yep. <laughs> I, you know what? I watched that movie probably more than any other thing in the world, and mm -hmm. I never knew that until this moment. Well, welcome to Six Degrees of Feature Film. Yeah, we're breaking stuff. it down. Yeah. We're learning so many things. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh, that poor woman. She's the fifth beetle. She's the fifth beetle of exotic dancer. <laughs> She's the, wait, there was a fifth beetle? <laughs> 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 yes, Stacey, there was. I know, exactly. I and he's so bummed. I know. <laughs> or what's his name? Joe Beetle, whatever. Uh, there's a terrible movie called Backbeat that you can revisit oh, to yeah. find out about it. Yeah, okay. there you go. Okay. All Speaking right. of random rabbit holes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're already off topic. It's yeah. two minutes in. We every had time, some. Okay, time. so the director of this, Adrian Lin, also did Fatal Attraction, Unfaithful, mm. and what were so you nine and a half uh, weeks? Nine and a half weeks. Jacob's Ladder, uh, Indecent Proposal. Yeah. Oh man, Indecent yeah. Proposal. Yeah. That also stores stars demi Moore, which sure we'll be does. discussing mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. but anyways um so back to flash dance which won an oscar for best original song for what a feeling well as we deserved as we a yes. well deserved win exactly mm -hmm. but it was also nominated for best original song for maniac as well and we were discussing this before the show uh, maniac was actually written for a different movie and then performed in this film and when they did that with a song from moulin rouge they told them they couldn't be nominated for an Oscar because it was written, a song was written for Romeo and Juliet and then used in Moulin Rouge. For so Romeo plus sign Juliet. Yes, yes sorry. Yes. Um, ah, yes. So yes. I was like, well, maybe the rules had changed from this time to that time since Maniac was written for something else. And I have an idea, guys. Here's what I got. What? What? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's what I would really like to do. I want to do a shot for shot remake of Maniac, <gasps> obviously with myself, but since Jennifer Beals had a body double, I want a body double too, and I want it to be a chubby guy. Oh, hot. Oh, <laughs> I'm super into it. I love it. I think this will go viral. Yes. I totally yes. agree. Well, you know, there was that terrible J-Lo video mm. where she kind of did a rip on Maniac. Okay. Yes. So you can do a shot for shot remake of her remake with a chubby guy yes. as your body whoa, double. Whoa. Who's going to have the good wig, though? Will you oh have the gosh. good wig or will the body double have the good wig? He has to have the good wig. <sighs> yeah. You know, yeah. I could probably do my hair up like yeah. pretty good and nice. then give the guy the wig. Yeah. Right. That would work. Yeah. Uh, do you have anybody in mind? Like, is I could do Greg Miller. I think he dances. Beautiful. Um, you know. Can't wait. So I, I'm looking <laughs> we'll forward see. to this. We'll see if he'll s accept my offer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm Everything in this podcast is turning me on. I'm just very, very <laughs> sexualized today. So That's what happens when you're talking about exotic dancing yes. and Jennifer Beals. Yes. Let's talk about all the glitter in Flash Dance. Yes. Guys. Guys. Oh, my God. I watched Flash Dance for the first time last night. What? 
what is this movie? What is happening? Okay, it's this amazing. is so interesting. I love this because is this is a movie that <laughs> like formed my childhood, which says a lot about me. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, tell me about your experience. Okay, <laughs> put it on and tell me what happened. I put it on and immediately <laughs> it was like first when the, and I was like, oh, this is epic. Like building up. It was like eleven o'clock in my yes. bed, jammies on, you know, fur little blanket, so comfy. And then I was like jumping around in my room because I was so pumped. Oh, the she's best. like petting a cat. It's like sunset <laughs> or whatever. She's on a bike. I don't know what the fuck is going on and then they're in like it's like a strip club but it's not it's like if you want to be exotic like a dancers we- it's exotic dancing but it's like weird modern artistic, artistic. yeah it it's is so strange and there's one scene where it's like she's in like a bathroom and she's in like Harajuku makeup or whatever oh, and yeah. I'm like I don't know what's going on <laughs> the Someone, strobe light yeah strobe lights strobe light and the guy whatever the guy's reaction to it where he's like oh strobe light can't watch that was me I was like <laughs> what is that oh, I was so confused it's someone rolled around in body glitter. There's so much glitter. The first scene where um, he's a dream, that song she mm-hmm. dances to, and she's in like the big 80s coat, you know, and yes. like the yes. flowy pants. Very, very 80s. Yes. This is and with like the water, silhouette. right? This is with the water. For, mm-hmm. Like the first thing we see, I was like, I'm already wet, just like her. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then she like Amazing. she like flings her head and it already has like glitter oh, yes. on her cheekbones and I'm like ah 80s mm-hmm. it's amazing it's it amazing. is the best so here's my s- backstory with flash dance mm-hmm. my parents produced laser discs when I was a kid oh, cutting okay. edge yes. truly cutting edge and we had a laser disc player instead of a VHS player and because laser discs never really took off we only owned probably six movies my entire childhood one was Blues Brothers, and <laughs> one was Flash Dance, and one yes. was Saturday Night Fever. I, and the rest were like random animated things. Oh, and Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. So I came home pretty much every day after school and put on Flash Dance, which I realize now, I'm like, my parents were such creeps that they were like, honey, what do you want to watch? Flash That's Dance? It. Let's like, yeah. How did they keep me off a pole? Oh, my gosh. Like, but the the strip of gold glitter Just right is like oh. so beautiful. Yes. And she is the Martha Graham of exotic dancing. Yes. It never occurred to me <laughs> just how artistic and wonderful it is. Mm-hmm. But it was. The mother of modern dance for those not in oh. the know of Martha Graham. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But that movie, I love that it inspired that same epic feeling in you that it inspired in my like seven-year-old self that mm-hmm. makes me really happy. It, it, it holds up is what you're telling me. It absolutely mm-hmm. holds up. There are so many scenes where I, I watch it and I'm like, I know this is dumb, but I'm absolutely captivated by it. Like the workout scene. Let's talk <gasps> about the workout scene for five to seven <laughs> minutes. Oh, yeah. What is happening? She uh. has one of them is wearing like dangly earrings. Like while she works what out, do like you work out, in, girl? feather, just now, little stuff. The other I'm day, tame, my trainer had earrings similar to that. So oh well, what I, if they get know? caught? Homegirls well, gonna rip out her She's a trainer though, so she maybe yeah, she's know. not she's not doing all of it. So. And it's not just any workout montage. It is a workout montage set to Joan Jett's <laughs> "I Love Rock and Roll." Oh, it's like boom, and they're all like boom, white boom, backlit, boom. and it's yeah, yeah, and they're working and they're getting a sweat. <laughs> and the, it is. I will say that is also where I got all of my what to do with a man advice because she said the one chick who's wearing the dangly earrings goes just pick up the phone and call the dude yeah and I'm like yes yeah. that's right <laughs> don't sit in a corner being weird just pick up the phone and call the dude if you like him let him know yeah be aggressive yeah. steal him kidnap him keep him in your house it's fine <laughs> i have four saw um, 12 <laughs> <laughs> exactly there but there yeah there's so many great 80s moments and i didn't really understand just like uh, I was like, there's a real strip club in there, which is re- which is devastating when her friend is there and like right. just dancing around. Mm. That's awful. But then she's in like a strip club, but it's not really a strip club. It's like this like fancy strip right. club. And I also like how he's artistic. getting after them. Like you guys need to do more upbeat songs. Upbeat yeah. songs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> but it's great because you've got a stand-up comic who's the cook. Yeah. Right. You have oh, who does one set and kind of <laughs> yeah. somewhat kills it and then is like, I'm moving to L.A. That's totally yeah. the story of everyone's life that yes, we know. Yes, yes, <laughs> That's how I got here. <laughs> I was put, I threatened to put cockroaches in the burgers and pretty, the next thing I knew, I was living in West Hollywood. <laughs> no, but it's go. true. It is like the, the, it's the fancy, upscale, artistic strip club. But, I mean, when you think of iconic moments in 80s movies you cannot say that the chain pole to the yes. douse of water is not one of the most iconic moments which is crazy too because like you said body double that wasn't actually jennifer right. beals who performed that and, and they hid that so well they did. because i thought it was her they made sure that no one knew that she had a body double until like 
I don't know why IMDb came out and was sure. like, <laughs> guess what? Here's this girl. She did all of this. Until the internet wrecked all of our dreams. <laughs> yeah. It was it like was a French so. dancer, right? Some like random French woman. Uh, I do have her name mm. somewhere. See, and I'll find it. Name. We'll never know. And that's we okay. Don't we don't need to know. Yeah, yeah. Because it's part of the magic of movies. It was rock. pre-CGI CGI. Yeah. And it's the reason that we all had inspired dreams. That you couldn't be, you could be more than a waltzer. You could be more than an exotic dancer. You could be a ballerina. You could. You and you could. can also eat lobster with just just a dicky, a tuxedo dicky. <laughs> what was and that? That was the best. What? I, I was like, when we, when it got to that scene, and I hadn't seen the movie in a while, and my husband was in the room, and I was like, I feel like something happens. Either she doesn't have pants on or something. <laughs> <laughs> And then she took her jacket off. I was like, that's right. She doesn't have a shirt underneath that dickie. Uh-huh. That's and right. And again, see, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to talk about this. I'm learning so many things about myself. Before I was married, when I used to date, my number one tactic was to not wear a bra because I knew uh-huh. that, I mean, I would wear a shirt on top of yes, it, but yes. I knew that if a dude knew that I wasn't wearing a bra, it was an instant deal closer. Yeah. <laughs> See, everything I know, I learned from Flashdance. <sighs> this is amazing. I'm oh learning so goodness. many things about myself. <laughs> I'm learning. So, I'm learning so many new things about what I should have been doing this entire time. Don't wear dating. a bra and just no pick bra. up the phone and call the dude. Okay. All right. <laughs> but should I tell him I'm not wearing a bra, or should I wait until we're in person and he sees that I'm not wearing a bra? You wait. You, you obviously wait. wait, and then okay. it's the reveal okay. because oh. that that moment wouldn't be as evocative as powerful if okay. she'd said, "Hey, P.S. Baby, I'm not wearing a bra," oh. and then <laughs> it's, it's about taking off that jacket. And I will say the way she eats the lobster is absolutely repulsive. She's Ooh. like eating it like corn on the cob or something, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, that's not I sexual. swear. <laughs> I'm like, she's going to get that stuck in her teeth. I don't know what. It's bad string cheese lobster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's yeah. gross. No. It's gross. no, 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 no. no. Well, well, maybe she's never had lobster before. We gotta that's true. She's a. Uh, and according I mean, to Eliza uh, Schlesinger, like you order the lobster, that means you're giving up. <gasps> You're giving it up to the guy. That's right. So don't order lobster don't unless order you lobster. want unless you want to give it up. That's the I sign. Want to. That's the yeah, sign. I might I might want to. I, I don't know what I'll be That's feeling. That's the go ahead. Know? Well, but yeah. going back to the director of this film, mm-hmm. I will say that I think Unfaithful is a phenomenal movie that Incredible. really it really shows you, you know, how you can make a romantic cheating film in its sure. own which is weird i just watched it for the first time oh. like a few weeks ago and i was like i really wanted more of act two and less of act three fair <laughs> enough yeah but that scene on the train where she's flashing back to their oh. tryst and yeah. she's crying but she's laughing and she's having su- that i think is just such a an incredible that is a set piece of acting Coming from right. that, I, I mean, yeah, I think that movie's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And Fatal Attraction, come on, yes. that changed everything. That, that was, did. That was crazy. That was like that saved a lot of marriages. It, it <laughs> sure did. It sure did. And it made Glenn Close sexy, which I never really thought of her yeah. as sexy. But they're like fucking in the sink, and oh my yeah. gosh, this a lot is going on. It and is. boiling a bunny. Boil a bunny. If there's oh, a lot of man. iconic '80s references that came out of this man's career. Yes, that's yes. true. Thank you. Yeah, so whatever many. your name is. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian Lynn. Lynn. Adrian Lynn. <laughs> I've already forgot it. Mm-hmm. We should move on to our next film. So Ooh, we're going to okay. link this to two films that um, have strippers as the main character. Yes. Let's start with our weakest link, which okay. is Striptease, which came out June 28th, 1996. <gasps> now, the reason I wanted to see this film is because I've seen the trailer and I was like, wow, Demi Moore looks Hot. awesome. Hot. It's great. Like. Uh, I just want to see her naked. Yeah. So, th- and, and that's what I'm going to get. That's so actually let's why watch this, this movie. movie got greenlit. <laughs> <So> that <laughs> is. We were like, to be more boobies. She's not wearing a bra. She ordered the lobster. She there was we go. 34 she when this came out. Easy breast implants for this movie. She must have because, like, someone had asked while I was watching it on Twitter, someone had asked, like, did she get a boob job for that? I was like, I don't know. And then, like, later the reveal of her entire self oh is yeah. there. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, there's no way that's real. No well, way. So I, like you, Stacey, had not seen striptease until last night. Oh. I <laughs> picked so up burritos, went over to my best friend's house, <laughs> and we watched it. And I was like, this is the worst use of $4 that has <laughs> yes. ever, I mean, this movie is garbage. So bad. It is. Well, here was the thing that I didn't know, because my... Okay, my experience of watching this was twofold. Was it, it, there was a little bit of, okay, I love Flashdance because I grew up watching it. Mm -hmm. And so I have very fond memories of it, and it still lives in this beautiful place in my mind where it is perfect in its own way. Mm -hmm. 
striptease, I don't have that reference point for. I'm seeing it as an adult. It wasn't part of like any weird sexual awakening for me. Like I don't have any reference for it except for knowing that she takes her boobies out and there's that hot scene where she like rips her shirt open, which is a gif that I see all the time. She's like in a in a menswear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then she's in a sparkly like bikini top. Which Mm -hmm. they use a ZZ top like song for in the trailer, but there's no ZZ top in the movie. And I'm like, hold up, people. First of all false advertisement. Because I would like that song in there. What was going on with Annie Lennox? <laughs> what? Okay. All over. Oh, okay. Every, all one over of her the strip, every one of her strip numbers is to an Annie Lennox song. Yes, to which yes. I'm like, what? Because it felt like they were trying to do the flash dance yeah, thing. And they yeah, were yeah. trying to make it artistic. But mm-hmm. it wasn't artistic. It, wasn't. it all was just dirty and gross. gross. And you're like, to me, you're a mother. Cover the boobies. You're a mother whose daughter is starring in the movie with yeah, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rumor Willis. Willis. Rumor Willis in this movie. She's oh, terrible She was in at least it. cute. She no. was cute. And her hair was adorable. But, oh, please. So, yeah. We've got Annie Lennox striptease numbers in, like, the weirdest, weirdest yes. strip club ever called the Eager Beaver. Which I will <laughs> say, uh, I would wear a shirt that said that. <laughs> um, Bing Ray with a monkey. Why is there a <laughs> monkey? I don't know. Why was there a monkey? And the choker, know. the choker he's wearing the entire movie. Yes. I was like, that choker needs its own sequel. <laughs> Vin Reigns. And you've got the T-1000 showing up as the deadbeat ex-husband. Mm-hmm. There is yes. so much exposition. This movie there starts, is. and the first, like, maybe the third or fourth line is, I just lost my job as a secretary for the FBI. Delivered almost like that. And I'm like, yep. oh, my God. So you're setting up that there's going to be some weird, like, thrown-in investigation somewhere in this film? Yeah, I right. was shocked because the thing that the trailers did not reveal is this is basically a slapstick strip film, which does right. not make It seems sense. more of a drama when you watch the trailer. But it's not it's at not. all. It pl- yeah. And I wasn't sure. I was like, is this playing like a comedy? And that wig that Burt Reynolds was wearing, oh. that also Ugh. needs a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell. Burt Reynolds doing like the worst audition for a Quentin Tarantino movie I've ever seen. <laughs> it was the weirdest film. And I, Stacey, had you seen it when you were younger? I saw it when I was like 10 years old, like way too young. I saw movies mm-hmm. way too young. My parents, they didn't even care. You know, they were like, okay, this is fine, whatever. <laughs> um, they just let me run around. I was too much. You know, I was I was a too much personality. Like, they were just like, Watch let it her it's fine, it's sit fine. down and be sit quiet. Down, go away. So I was like, <laughs> okay, this is why I love movies. Um, but yeah, I saw it when I was way too young. And the o- the I don't know why, but this moment stuck out of my mind where I'm going to get up and do this, where she's like dancing for Burt Reynolds and she's like kind of like this and she's like, do you know the artist's friends? <laughs> and, like, oh, music, yeah. and I'm like, oh, this is gross. Like <laughs> even as a 10 year old, I was like, this is dirty. I don't like this. This is inappropriate. Yes. Like it was, oh. It was, it was, and that was the other thing. I mean, let's go back to the positives. Mm-hmm. Her body in oh, this movie God. is off Bang. the charts. And P.S. We spent the extra two minutes to watch the unrated version because okay. if you uh, watch one cheaper. hour and 50, no, it was not. Oh. Oh, darn. Unfortunately, they're both three dollars and ninety nine cents <laughs> if you watch it in HD on Amazon. But if you watch one hour and fifty five minutes, you get the regular version, and okay. one hour and fifty seven minutes is the unrated version. I really don't know how much unrated we really got here, right. but it is not sexy. The thing about Flash Dance is it is not sexy in like a titillating way. It's sexy right. in like a, it actually like an evocative way. This felt cheap. And ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And she's working in a strip club where everybody else takes out their boobies except for her. The only time we see her tits is when she's dancing in her, like, underwear. And then she puts on shorts on top of her underwear to dance in, like, her towel in front of the mirror while she's blow-drying her hair to Annie right. Lennox yes. again. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is going on? When have you ever in your uh. life... If you're going to be naked in front of the mirror, be naked mm-hmm. in front of the mirror. When have you ever been like, I'm putting on my underwear and then I'm going to put on my like lady shorts. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going to dance topless while I sing into my hair. But dryer. we did see her naked on stage because her daughter sees her. Oh, you're right. You're right. So Later we did on. see her. You're once. right. One yeah. time yeah. we see like mm-hmm. minor nipple. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, mm-hmm. and we need nipple major. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this movie needs. Now, I've heard people that have read the book are like, the book's really good. Again. And the movie the is book. really terrible. And I was like, huh. I'm not going to read the book, but I'll take your word for it. Is the book based on a true story? Because when that started, mm. I was like, this is based on a book? <laughs> I, I had don't no idea. This so. is a reveal to me that this is like literature. What's but. interesting is the guy that wrote the book also wrote this book called Hoot, which I read to my fourth grade class, Ooh. and I totally shouldn't have. <laughs> 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 what happened in uh, Hoot? Happened in the Hoot? problem in Hoot is that there's a plenty of um, minor foul language. Oh. Like, so, like, sh- like, like ass oh. or... I don't think they say 
bitch, but they definitely say ass a few times. What did you turn that into for your class? I was just like, I, well, the first time we were listening to it, <gasps> so I couldn't stop Oh, no. It. And I was like, oh, crap. We're going to have to go back. <laughs> I'm going to have to read this. I have to, like, I had to go through each chapter, like, before I read it to them or yeah. before I played. Like, either the person, the narrator would, like, read it to us mm-hmm. or I would read it. So if it was a chapter that I saw had bad words, I would read it. And then I would, you know, go over those nice. parts. And then the kids that actually bought the book that had the book with them would be like, I know you changed that. Mm. I know that's mm. different. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Movies. What is not the word in my book? How do you pronounce this? Uh, wow. Okay. But going back oh, to this. So the yes. book is supposedly good? Supposedly. I mean, now that's it's only based on like one person that <laughs> sent me a tweet about it. But I don't know. sent the book. Like the book itself is probably what the plot of this movie is trying to be, which is a drama. But then it doesn't have all the weird slapstick stuff in yeah. it, where like the tone is off. So like, off. I don't know. It, let me run down all the Lenny Annie Lennox songs. Oh, in okay. This. Okay. They, she has "Money Can't Buy It," mm-hmm. "Cold," "Little Bird," "Sweet Dreams," and "Missionary Man." That is quite a few films. What or quite a few happened? songs, I should say. What happened? <laughs> Annie, I want to know the meeting. I want to understand the <laughs> phone call where they were like, listen. So Demi Moore was at her peak at this yes. point. I mean, yes. she was a box office titan, and she could not be stopped, and she's posing naked on the cover of It Vanity made $113 Fair. million. Dollars yeah. Which cost $40 crazy. million to make. That's crazy. And this is, you know, let's factor in inflation that's even more money that's like civil war money that's yeah. captain america money damn so w- she obviously can get whatever she wants right you're reading the script and she wanted to she had that insane body her body in this movie is ridiculous and at this point this. she had 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 she had all three kids or just two of the three i don't know um if rumor was like what she had to have been like six maybe yeah. at most so maybe they'd had all three kids so i mean so please i've never had a child and my body looks Nothing like that body. That body is crazy. So that you body want to flaunt it. But I just don't understand how Demi Moore could have said, yes, this is the choice that I'm going to make. This is what I want to do. And I'm getting Annie Lennox on board. And we're bringing in Burt Reynolds. Yeah. I, uh, how do you, what is the production I think meeting? it's all about um, her showing off her body. And she's like, here's a way I can do it. I'll just sign on to this. Sh- sign on to this. <laughs> Everyone will see it. This is the, my time capsule. Kind of like my photo shoots. My time capsule of like when I looked my best. There we a go. Nice, a nice oh. little snapshot <laughs> of what <laughs> you want. <laughs> right. That's actually not a bad. I like that. Now, you know what? That just made me like this movie more. Okay, good. Because it is a time capsule and she does look incredible. So good for her. Yeah. So maybe it's a feminist statement. It could maybe. be. With bad writing. Yeah. <laughs> feminist statement with bad Let's writing. Let's move on to something with good writing. Okay. Or at least something better yeah. than this. <laughs> and that's Magic Mike. XXL. Oh, you mm. guys. So Came so out good. July 1st, so 2015. Let me just oh. say something. I had not seen this until like a few days ago <gasps> because Lucky. I was like, okay, we're going to watch. We're going to do these films. I should watch this movie, obviously. I did not really. I knew what it was about, but I d- I was not prepared. Genuine's Pony is mm. now like my Pavlov's dog. Like oh. I can't listen to that without <laughs> being like, <laughs> I'm like I gotta excuse myself for a while, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Don't ever apologize. Don't ever apologize for that. As well it should. My mom <laughs> just came across Magic Mike Double XL on TV the other day, mm-hmm. and I ended up walking into her house, and she was like, "Have you seen this movie?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, mom." Seen it, lived it, have the hat. <laughs> Literally, not even kidding. That movie, last year, I went and I saw that movie at one of the first press screenings. And I can honestly say it was one of the best cinematic experiences I have had as an adult. You're in this theater. It was one of the first public screenings. I'm with my dear friend, Kara <coughs> Warner. And the movie starts, and you realize that they, they knew the mistakes they made with the first one. They knew sure. that they went too, too much drama. Too, too much drama, too, dark, too much yeah. Alex Pettifer. They fixed yes. all those problems this time around, yeah. and they made it more fun. That final strip scene at oh the convention, my. Oh my gosh. which goes on for about 20 minutes, and yeah. which Soderbergh oh. dp Oh, my God. I <laughs> am, I was screaming. I wished I'd had dollar bills to throw at the screen and the entire audience was going crazy. I was like, how am I not an extra in this scene? Like, how am I not there <laughs> right now? My friend Kara Warner was. <gasps> Why? And said it so that they brought a bunch of press down to, uh, I want to say it was South Carolina or Florida or wherever it was, well, uh, Atlanta, yeah. probably Atlanta, something like that. 
Atlanta, Savannah, home of Georgia great strip clubs. Because that's where the most sure. of it takes place. I don't, I don't know. know. Could I'll be. call Maybe her. I'll text her out. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. False facts. <laughs> so she, they brought a bunch of press down there, and unfortunately, the press was primarily men. And my friend Kara, and they're watching Soderbergh frame up shots on like you know Joe Maganello, you mm-hmm. know, with his ripped bicep oh humping God. a lady to Nine Inch Nails, <laughs> and right? all the male journalists were like. We should go. We should go back to the hotel. And she was like, oh, honey, no, we are staying until this <laughs> is over. <laughs> she unfortunately, uh, you know when they made her leave? Channing Tatum. And that incredible scene with Channing Tatum and Twitch from yes. So You Think You Can Dance. Oh, my gosh. The mirror. And they're like high-fiving each other. With R. Kelly, who I do not support in general, but with his song Cookie, mm-hmm. yep. one of the dirtiest classics ever. Yeah. They had to leave for that scene because the male Why? journalists finally won over. And Kara was like, I, I hate all of you. So she got to experience that moment in the it's theater amazing. with me. We were holding hands. We were clutching our pearls. And then we all got <laughs> drinks afterward. And then I went home to find my husband. I texted her and I was like, baby, I'm coming home. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Be ready. I'm coming home and then you're coming home. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing one of my G-strings. <laughs> and he danced to oh Genuine Pony. Oh and it was God, the best Pony. ever. Oh and I was like, gosh. we don't even have to have sex because this is better than sex right now. <laughs> it was the best. That movie, will cha- it will change your marriage. It will. Oh gosh. <laughs> it if will. you embrace We it, are proof of this. you. Well, Stacey, you have a boyfriend. Genuine Pony. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll that. work on it. I'll work <laughs> on it. Put in your pairs of underwear. <laughs> yeah. Put on a candle and come home. But the thing that I also love about that movie is a good road movie has so much to offer and mm-hmm. this has a good road movie written all over it plus lots of abs and good butts and i love dance <laughs> yeah. sequence anything with a great dance sequence and the fact that they brought in somebody like twitch who yes. can't necessarily act but who can dance his ass off that's what you need that's what you need in this movie and also donald yep. glover oh. i love donald glover <gasps> love him he's so oh, tiny hey. he's a little tiny man but he's very sexual in this movie he was like yes. doing it for me and he was mm-hmm. like what was this scene? It's like Caroline, and like, and I was mm-hmm. like, I felt like he I was want this to subscription me. service. Yeah. Where is this? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I want to open where is that this club? underground yeah. club that I, I can be a part of. It. Well, first yeah. of all, the fact that they are bringing Magic Mike live to Las yes. Vegas yes. in March 2017. I think we have about 287 days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not that I'm counting. Yeah. I that I cannot wait for. But I genuinely want to open a club somewhere in Los Angeles. That has this same thing where men are completely objectified and women yes. are made to feel like queens. Yes, I right. want that. Gotta sue. Yes. Gotta sue. <laughs> Wouldn't, uh, they, Tina Pink is there. I, I loved her. She was, was great. To be a in male. This. Do you want to be Character. worshipped? I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, I do. I do, Jada. Jada, yes. Was she taking you to church the whole time? I know. She was. She really I was. I love that movie. And the fact that Soderbergh DP'd it, that we right. get to see all of these beautiful shots and this like incredible chiaroscuro shooting that we've come to expect from his films but we also get fun i right. mean that 7-eleven scene where he where <laughs> joe great. is how much for the cheetos and water oh god it's <laughs> the <laughs> women balls on molly oh my god with backstreet boys yeah come on That's man fun. it's one it, it is one of my favorite scenes in a movie that is one of my favorites of the last at least year and a half i'm so glad it's i saw this gold it really is it's I almost had to buy it too because it was uh, like you couldn't rent XXL. You could only buy it. And like you could buy the bundle for mm. the same price as buying just XXL. And so I was Ooh. thinking about it and then I was like, maybe I should check Redbox. And then I checked Redbox and I was like, it's there. And so I was telling Jeff, like, my husband, I was telling him, like, I might have to buy this bundle. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, but I'll check Redbox. And so then I rented it and then I was like, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't buy the bundle I'm because I was like, wait a minute. That's a bundle uh, you need in your life, girl. <laughs> it is. It's a big so bundle. It's a it big is. nine inch bundle. But then it goes into our, like, I have to figure out how to work my um, my library on iTunes because then my kids' movies are also with Magic Mike. So it's oh like, gosh. he's yeah, magic. Kids. Mom, he's magic. What is his magic? Well, Drop he has a, a bunny pops out of his underwear and then Glenn Close boils it and then everyone dances to Maniac and we're all wet with water. Ching. Yeah. That's what we're wet with. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too much. Too much. Well, oh, I, I love it, though. And I love that there is this underlying message of feminism in it, too. Yeah. Is that it's not about, like, the women being objectified as opposed to, I mean, striptease is so, and also, we didn't even talk about Pandora Peaks. The one of the strippers who has, I thought she was the woman who crushes beer cans with her boobs. She has <laughs> oh. these insanely huge yes. fake 
bosoms. Oh my gosh! And y- they were like this the is back in striptease, everyone. Yeah, sorry. Going know. back to striptease, they have that weird pull effect that mm-hmm. like those really, really enormously engorged fake right. boobs that just make it's like they're basketballs. She has like basketballs for boobs. And I just wonder, what? as a man. When it looks that artificial, mm-hmm. tweet me. Wh- tell me what you think. Is that <laughs> attractive? Because let's be honest. Like if if a man walked in with a penis that was that gigantic, my first impulse would be fear. I'd be like, Ow. sure, Ooh. just like in the movie, how the mm-hmm. that guy there is like, go. Oh, yeah. I can't. Yeah. yeah, women won't have s- intercourse. Going with me. to Magic Mike Double back, XL. Back to Magic Mike. Going back to yes. the werewolf Joe Maganello. Yeah. Yes. He, yeah, it would be scary. His name is Big Dick Richie. Yes. Magic Mike <laughs> XL. He can't. He needs a, a Goldie Cox lady because and it's and it's Andy McDowell oh that was great she's She's the glass slipper beautiful like southern belle mom she can handle that dick honey she sure can can, sugar bless you yes Mm -hmm. bless your heart bless your heart oh yeah (laughs) the best well i love all this discussion about magic mike xxl but we should probably go on to our links do you want us to go on to our links first or do you want to go on to dream i just hope you don't steal one of my links i I don't think no 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 way i don't know what did he do this is crazy we're linking off of striptease and we're doing movies with annie lennox songs (gasps) yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) god it actually is utilitarian because that (laughs) pissed me off watching it yesterday hit it ladies okay (laughs) do you want to go first i'll go first Sure. Okay. Mine's going to be an unusual choice. Um, this movie is not the best movie. A lot of people Agreed. were super hyped for it in 2011. And then they came out and they were like, what is this bullshit? But Oscar Isaac, this is the first time I saw him in a film. And he plays the bad guy in it. And I was like, who is that guy that's in this film? He's incredible. And now he's like the biggest star in the world. Star Wars, X-Men, Debatable. whatever you want. I'm talking but about good. Sucker Punch. Okay. Oh. So. Yes, yeah. that movie sucked. Yeah. The trailer was so good. I the know. trailer's amazing. And then you watch it and you're like, this hey. makes no sense. I saw this movie. You did. You saw this movie? I did. You never see movies. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh, I miss them. But I, I saw it. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a movie that happened. And I mean, I mean. I don't even I don't even know what to say about the movie. The levels make no sense. It was like he was trying to do like a weird inception sexual yeah. baby doll. He being something. Zack Snyder, right? Zack Snyder. I kind of yes. like his style, visual. Yeah, I visual, like his visual style. style. He and this is the first time I think where he it was an adaptation. Like he did his own material, mm-hmm. and you can tell that that's just not his strong suit. And that's what we've been discovering. Um, is that it's just the story? It makes it, it 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 doesn't make any sense, and you don't really care about anything that's happening. But I loved everything visually, and I wish it would have been this awesome epic girl power thing. And instead, it was not. But Oscar Isaac was like super captivating as the villain, and I really liked him. And I felt like I didn't feel sorry for him, but like there's this scene in the end when he's really upset that spoiler alert she gets a lobotomy, and he's like devastated that he can't objectify her and rape her anymore. Oh and he like cries and it's awful, but I also felt kind. I like felt his emotion. I don't know. It made me love Oscar Isaac, so that's why I picked this movie because mm-hmm. now we have Oscar Isaac, the superstar, and we get to see even in a terrible movie, he's killing it, you know, and he's he's rocking it. He's my Wha- fave. What yeah. was the Annie Lennox song? Uh, it was Sweet Dreams. So oh, yes, they did a it cover was. of it. It was the opening scene yes. where it's like this weird slow mo thing, and then her stepdad sh- like kills the mom, and mm. then she leaves all the money to the sister. So then she tries to kill the stepdad, accidentally kills the sister. He puts her away in an asylum, and then she goes into like five levels of crazy town to try and get out of it or something. Totally. My biggest issue that with that movie was the last minute of it where mm. you realize that this whole thing I said about like two levels of crazy in I was like if this is all a dream sequence because yeah. she's getting a lobotomy I'm gonna hate this movie it's, it and is. that's exactly what it is and mm. I was like fuck you and the horse you rode in on yeah. I was so pissed but that film we were I was saying earlier I liked that there was sort of a feminist message the thing that I loved about that movie was I thought it was going to be this awesome girl power the cast was so great yes uh 
I've been stalking Miss Movies over here, and mm-hmm. so I know that we share a love of a girl whose name I cannot pronounce, Carla. Gugino. I don't even say the last oh. name. I, just, I call her Carla Troop Beverly Hills. <laughs> yes, I because love I'm her. like, because uh, we were one talking of the greats. about this today, and how one I was like, greats. I don't know if there's any guest that's gonna want to come on and talk about Troop Beverly Hills with me, and it's my favorite movie. Uh, I will totally come <laughs> back okay. for that because yes. my dad still says patches. <laughs> we don't need no stinking patches. I watched that movie like five thousand times. If Flashdance informed how I date men, Troop Beverly Hills yes. informed how I wish I dressed. <laughs> Yeah. And the yes, fact that absolutely. I love cookies. But mm-hmm. uh, Carla Gugino, Gugino, Gugino. Gugino is mm-hmm. so, like, first of all, she's one of the most beautiful women on the planet. She's yes. And I <coughs> wanted her to have this, like, a real depth of character. I'm hoping roadies will be that for her because she is so underutilized. And then you had mm-hmm. all of these other <coughs> great actresses where they Jenna Malone Jenna yes. Malone who love her Abby love. Cornish love her it could Vanessa have been Hudgens Vanessa <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a breakout for so many of those women and instead it was a complete disaster yeah. and what's interesting is it did not in any way it well no I'll take that back Zack Snyder got a little stink on him from it but not a lot yeah and I right. feel like that movie from a different director would have gotten a whole lot more stink on it yeah because it was beautiful Mm -hmm. so well shot he took everything he learned from 300 and put it into like a pink palette and it was great but it was a mess it was a mess and we should have known from that moment that he should never ever direct anything where he has a story that is not handed to him by somebody who has like all say yeah because he gets visuals he just doesn't get Get so the is the problem the story itself, the screenwriting then? It's the is story, the it's the message. Also, okay, and this is like maybe a small thing that I always notice, but for things like this where, okay, they're going into these levels, right? And so the very first time she goes into like the deepest level, she has this big fight scene, right? And she's fighting these like giant robot army whatever things. And they like punch her and she like flies across the room, slams to the wall and then just gets back up. And at that moment, I'm like, okay, so there's no physical consequences <laughs> in these levels. It's like a video game. Like y- 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 yeah. you won't die. You're not right. going to get injured or like break bones or whatever. So then they're going through these levels and I'm like, why should I even care or feel fear with what's happening? Because we, you just proved that she's not going to get physically hurt. She's been, they're like flooding her around like it's Loki in the Hulk, you know? <laughs> and then uh. later, um, Jenna Malone's character, spoiler alert, gets stabbed. And I'm like, she's not going to fucking die. You just showed that you can. <laughs> th- 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 what? Like it, it made no sense. And, yeah. oh, I love it. you know, ugh, so. It's just crazy. That's a big thing. Yeah. When you set up the rules of a universe, you have to stick to the rules of that yes. universe. Otherwise, you're telling a bad story. Exactly. It's a messy, sloppy story. Exactly. And that's the problem with that movie. Yeah. And I, I like the theory of it. I like that it's like, oh, these girls, are, I, I like that they're going to go into their own mind and try and like figure it out. And that's fine. But he didn't follow through with it. And also, it's not none of it's really real. Mm. You know, like like he proved in that last second. Like, it was just all a dream anyway. So why do we care? Why do we care? We yeah. don't care. And that's why the movie fucking suck. But Oscar Isaac is lovely. And <laughs> totally. But back great. to Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Oscar. Back See, for me, Oscar <laughs> Isaac, it was Inside Llewyn Davis. Inside oh, Llewyn Davis yeah. rocked my world so hard. Mm-hmm. And he, I fell so madly in love with. Right. And I'm really so glad he has the career he has now. Although I do yes. think he was underutilized in Apocalypse. Ex Machina yeah. is where I first Ex recognized Machina. Oh my him. god, his dance scene. That sequence. Hey. Oh my god, he <laughs> can dance. I I he has him. a little Latin flavor to Hell him. Yeah, Have he you dance. seen the little Star Wars gif where he's like dancing with yeah. the crew? Oh, it's the I love, that. So I love that. It's so it's cute. It's the best. Mm-hmm. No, he, see, speaking of men who can dance, I feel like men who can dance is really the theme of this thing. Sure. Probably. And monkeys yes. randomly with ring rings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a choker. Doing? I don't Why know was what's the happening. There? I don't know. So the other movie that we have that um, has an Annie Lennox song in it is American Beauty <gasps> from October 1st, 1999. Um, it comes towards the end of the film and it's the song Don't Let It Bring You Down and it's basically when Lester is with Angela and he's then like he pretty much is going to have sex with her and this is the first time they kiss yeah it's well mm. you know and so thinking about it I was thinking about this scene because I watched it on YouTube and I was kind of like okay I'm older now so this isn't that gross to me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but when I was her age, when I saw the movie, because I was, you know, about Mina Savari's age, I was like, yeah, that would be gross. But looking at him through an older set of eyes now, I'm like, huh, not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> not so bad. Underwood. See, I, I always still think he's, I still think the scene's gross. I'm still like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's so sweet because 
you can see her chest like well i mean you can actually see her dress but she's like uh, sort of hyperventilating a little bit and she gets right. scared and there's this beautiful moment where she's like and you realize this character has been high it's it's the perfect encapsulation of that movie because every single person in that film has something deep and dark that they're hiding right. look and closer for her it's that she's living this lie of like putting on the facade of being this big slut but she's actually really vulnerable mm. and really sweet and the next time you see her she's sort of like wrapped up in that blanket and she's cocooned in her own way i thinking about that scene totally gives me chills i love that movie right. mm -hmm. and i love that moment because it's a it's character redemption for both of them in this big way yeah and there's it's such a perfect reveal god i love that movie i'm so glad you brought it up oh good i <laughs> love that um there's like a juxtaposition between thora birch and mina safari's character where they're kind of like going in reverse like one's kind of all made up at the beginning and then comes very plain at the end and the mm -hmm. other person's very plain and then is all made up at the end mm -hmm. and i thought that was kind of interesting i didn't really notice that until until more recently yeah. i think yeah but that movie's so great annette benning in that film oh my gosh the scene where she starts crying in yes. the empty she house closes the blinds and slaps herself in the face and tells herself to get it together yeah. that mm -hmm. is so sam mendy's i mean i I will not say that I loved Spectre, but I think in general, his directorial achievements are, and that in particular, mm -hmm. are so undervalued. He is just such a phenomenal filmmaker, and for somebody who's come from the theater world and then been able to transition that well mm -hmm. into a medium that is very, very different. Like, if you do a theater right. piece on screen, it's terrible, usually. <laughs> right. I was listening to your Doesn't episode translate. with Dan Merle. Mm -hmm. And you guys were talking about the producers and like that, th that's a mess yeah. when it's all proscenium instead of actually like really, but what Sam Mendes does so well is it's the opposite. Like you are so deep inside of his characters. It never feels theatrical. It mm -hmm. feels like painfully real. God, I love that movie. Mm -hmm. I love Peter Gallagher in this too, but I love God. Peter Gallagher just in general. There's some sort of man, like a crush that I have on this older man. <laughs> I will say while you were sleeping. While you're sleeping, yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the eyebrows. The eyebrows yeah, are probably. powerful. It is very, very powerful. <laughs> On fleek, right? They are. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Annie Lennox movies. That so whole, that's, that whole that's movie it, had a good have. soundtrack, I feel like. It did. Mm hmm. I just keep thinking I'm of like, like the score I and keep like the bag. Of, like, the <laughs> I was thinking like, of my rose is falling. Yeah. And he like pulls the rose out of her mouth. Oh, I love that. Or moment. whatever. It's so good. It's so Oh, good. and Paula Abdul did the dance sequence for the <gasps> yes. girls for the yes, she cheerleading did scene. With the hats. <laughs> I would never believe that Thora Birch's character would ever be some sort of cheerleader though. Like that. There's yeah, no, no way. She wouldn't have done uh. There was no one on my cheerleading slash dance teams that I never felt like this person doesn't really fit. <laughs> I mean, dun, 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 there's dun, dun, always. You didn't like her little <laughs> robot dance? Dun, 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 dun. Not that so she fast. couldn't dance, because she could dance okay, but like mm. just in general, like her demeanor and everything about her, there, it was like, oh, you didn't buy it? No. <laughs> she wanted to fit in, you know. That's right. true. Uh -huh. So, should I do my rundown? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. You yeah. are going off so of Magic Mike. I'm XXL. going off of Magic Mike Double XL, and I went in a different way direction okay. ladies good oh. the film that i'm going to link to is it's a two-way link it is the link of male camaraderie okay. and the link of steven soderbergh okay okay one of my favorite films of his which is oceans 11 yes nice. oceans 11 okay. i don't you know what year it came out i don't know 2000 and something <laughs> 2002 <laughs> you've got uh, a remake of a film that starred the rat pack back in the day mm -hmm. Very, but nobody really knew that. People had already totally forgotten. And in right. the age now where everything is a remake, that was actually sort of like cutting edge at the time. Mm -hmm. And you've got uh, George Clooney, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt leading the charge with Julia Roberts of this motley crew who take down a casino, which is owned by the uh, lovely Andy Garcia. This film is so great on so many levels because you have incredible comedy. You have such a fantastic cast. And when you're working with a cast with those many megastars, it could have easily gone wrong. It could have right. been really – well, and it did kind of go wrong in 12 and 13 <laughs> where it <laughs> felt more like yes. a great – you know, all of them were like, we're rich and we can go anywhere and let's, like, have a fun summer vacation and film it. <laughs> this felt like let's make a really great movie. Let's make a smart movie. It's a caper and a good caper film – is really difficult to pull off. Like I think the Thomas right. Crown Affair does it very well. Yes. There's a couple the movies. The Italian that, Job. The Italian that's Job. One of my favorites. Both versions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the remake version. I yes. oh, Marky Mark. Man. Random. Yes. My ex-boyfriend of five years was 
uh, Edward Norton's body double. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> and Edward Norton hated doing that film, didn't want to do it, was contractually obligated, wanted to get out of it. So in oh. every scene where you don't physically see his face... It's not him. It's not him. It's Whoa. either his stunt double or my ex-boyfriend. Oh, my so, gosh. So, like, there's a scene where a guy jumps out of a helicopter and mm-hmm. runs. It's supposed to be Edward Norton. That was his stunt double because he was like, I, I, I can't jump. That's I could hurt myself. The stunt double has to do it. In the scene where Mark Wahlberg <laughs> punches him out at the end. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. That's oh, my at ex-boyfriend. The, um, oh. At the restaurant. Uh, yes. All, all of the scenes where you see the back of a head. That oh is Dan gosh. Shooty. Oh, <laughs> you can tell too because every scene he's like, wah, he wah. hates being there. <laughs> Take your gold or whatever. Like he, <laughs> he hates being there. And his goatee. I hate Edward oh, Norton man. in that film, and I love Edward Norton. Like I am like all day Eddie. Oh me but too. I hate him. Where did time. you fall in love with him? Oh my gosh! In um, American Primal History. Fear. Me too. Yeah. And my mom was so worried <laughs> about me. Oh, he's so cute. And he's yes. so adorable. He's like, ah, nah, 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 nah. I didn't. I didn't do oh, that. And you're like, oh, his little adorable face. Oh, so good. I, my two big crushes in high school after Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves were mm-hmm. John Malkovich and Edward Norton. And my mom was so worried about me. You yes. know what I'm also realizing? There's another link in these movies. Oh, oh, Italian Job and Ocean's Eleven. I've hooked up with people in both of those movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Secrets okay. revealed. Totally the Asian <laughs> contortionist. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. So... <laughs> Uh, so please tell me it was Scott Kahn and or Casey Affleck. Please, please. What if it was please. both of them at the same Whoa, time? at the same time. Dang. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Run in a okay. train. What if queen, it was so over right? <laughs> no. But I think that that movie, Ocean's Eleven, going back to Ocean's Eleven, was for Soderbergh, for a guy who came out of something like Sex, Li- Sex Lies, and Videotape, mm-hmm. and who has made films that are so different. If you look at the first Magic Mike, if you look at something like Contagion, which ha- yes. feels nothing like, you know, ha- Hard uh, uh, Haywire, mm-hmm. which is another mm-hmm. uh, love, 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 love with it. another Channing Tatum film. Mm-hmm. Ewan McGregor is so good in that movie. Oh. And Gina Carano is so great in that film. So or The Girlfriend Experience. And then you look at something like Ocean's Eleven, they are so incredibly different, but they're strong in their own ways. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. Out of Sight is another one of my favorites of his because I think that nobody gets better performances out of George Clooney. George Clooney, who is a phenomenal right. actor across the board, but no one gets better work than I think Soderbergh gets out of him. And mm-hmm. that's a film where I'm a woman. You're all women. I don't think that I really understand male friendship because it, it, it's so different from mm-hmm. female yes. friendship. And then there's that great moment where they're at the Bellagio fountain and the Claire de Lune is playing and they're all looking at the fountain, like the water spouts, and they're not saying anything. But there is this sense of community that mm-hmm. I respect so much and I appreciate. And I feel like it was this window into the male mind that has stayed with me ever since. And that is a film that I just absolutely adore. And going off of that film into yes. more male friendship, mm-hmm. my next link. So we're going double XL mm-hmm. to Ocean's Eleven to a star of Ocean's Eleven, where I think you have one of the best versions of male friendship, which is Goodwill Hunting, Aww. starring Matt Damon Aww. and my Love favorite, miss him so much, Robin Williams mm. and Ben Affleck. So here you have male friendship on two levels. You've got Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, who wrote the script mm-hmm. together, mm-hmm. who came up as buddies. You know, Ben Affleck put him in all the Kevin Smith movies. Mm-hmm. They wanted to like make a name for themselves. They end up winning an Oscar for best screenplay, yeah. killing it. And now mm-hmm. we're still like working together and coming up together and have a production mm-hmm. company together and right. you know say sexist things on Project Greenlight together. <laughs> Although I still love that show. I love Project Greenlight. I know, but he was like, let's cast the show with diversity in the movie, not in the show. And I was like, Matt Damon. Ah. I still love you, but that mm-hmm. made me mad. Mm. But anyway. I think he got into some trouble for that, too, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. He, he grew up in Boston. He's super, super left-wing. He knew better than that in that yeah. moment. But you've got male friendship on that side. And then you have this incredible story of a, a genius who is sort of, you know, frustrated by his own brilliance and the friendship he has with Casey Affleck, mm-hmm. uh, Cole Hauser, Ben Affleck. Cole Hauser is one that is underutilized. Now, he was in Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> uh, but uh, but he's one that, like, you see from time to time, and I'm like, that guy's really good. I know. Well, see, see in school t- I think he was in School Ties. Oh, hell yeah, he was in yeah. School Ties. That's Probably. how they all became friends. Of course. Oh, School Ties. I mean, ties. School Ties. Brendan Fraser. Let's he's still my heart. Yes. <laughs> hair, his hair flop is still on point in School Ties. Yes. Yes. Oh, man, Queen. that shower scene. 
School Mom. ties. Now I'm gonna have to go back and watch. Okay, school ties. when you come back on, we're gonna do somehow link uh, school ties and True Beverly ties Hills. True Beverly yeah. Hills. It'll somehow, happen, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it there. We'll then get you it have there. the relationship too between Robin Williams and Matt Damon, which is so mm-hmm. beautiful mm-hmm. and like slowly built, so it feels really tangible and real and grounded. And then of course, Minnie Driver, who so deserves to work more. She mm-hmm. yes. was. If you rewatch that movie, her performance is subtle it is grounded it never feels like acting i fell in love with her in circle of friends mm-hmm. i just uh, she is somebody i i'm really looking forward to her show speechless which comes out later this year i think th- i'm very grateful she's having second life on tv yeah. because she is phenomenal and in that film there is never a moment where you don't believe that relationship right. where you don't believe her and i just, oh, but I just that such scene good the breakup scene like i i, I re that recently and i was just like bawling like yeah. i was like wow these people these actors brought me to this Mm -hmm. like that is amazing incredible totally but i just all these movies the the primary thing like going to xl and then oceans 11 and goodwill hunting is like i said i don't really understand male friendship i understand female to male friendship i understand female to female friendship but i feel like all of those movies share that link of camaraderie Mm -hmm. and what it's like behind closed doors when we're not invited and i Mm -hmm. love that about them that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, this is so good. We should play an Annie Lennox song and cry. Money can't buy it. All right. Just can't yeah. buy it. <laughs> that was good. Well, we are coming to the end of our show. We oh. have a few things that we do at the end of our show. One of those things is movie link tweets. I tweet out um, what is. Y- I tweet off of our first link, which was. Um, stripper as the main character of the film like what is your favorite movie that has a stripper as the main character and i got a few back uh shadango says the girl next door which is kind of a cheat Mm. um anthony tobias meet the millers matthew johnson says the full monty lyle morgan says as terrible as striptease is the book is great i love carl hassan (laughs) so thank you lyle uh colt says rocky horror picture show (gasps) michael atkinson says and Jorge Vasquez and Justin say showgirls. Warwick Congrave says leaving Las Vegas. Mr. Tux says meet Monica Velour. I've never heard of that. Have you either? No. He he showgirls says is a good call. Showgirls oh, yeah. is awesome. <laughs> Odd Shape Panel says Planet Terror. Joshua yeah. says Flashdance. Hey. Patrick McDonald says Exotica. Ryan G. Closer. Dr. Zolberg and Dustin Jacobs say The Wrestler. And Ellie Wells says Magic Mike. Yeah. So. Awesome. Oh. They've good hit ones. a few of ours. They've hit a few. Those are good. We also link it to Kevin Bacon. Because yep. why not? Because always, always. <laughs> so Kevin Bacon was in Where the Truth Lies with Stuart Hughes, who was in Troubled Waters with Jennifer Beals, who was in Flashdance. So there uh, you go. There it is. Pretty quick little link. Okay. Are you going to be able to do Rocky in um, Flashdance today? I can do it. So my voice is a little so. hoarse. Sorry. <laughs> Sasha, you've you've heard our show. So this so is the part where we have Stacy do a terrible impression of Rocky I as really someone bad. in <coughs> the I can't film. Wait. Wait, okay. Why is your voice hoarse? I just have I'm sick. I have a little oh. sore throat. I thought, <laughs> you like par- I thought you went to a strip club last night. And I was like yeah, <laughs> no, I was like screaming at the <laughs> drug to get by it. the thing last night. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Wait. <laughs> you need me too, right? No, you're that's right. That's right. Okay, um, so sh- who are you, Nick? Uh, you're Nick. So I'm Nick. Rocky, Sylvester Stallone as Rocky yes. as Nick in yes. Flashdance, and yes. I will be Alex. Yes. <clears throat> I'll bring him a doggy bag if you have dinner with me. I told you, I don't think it's a good idea to go out with the boss. Okay, well have it your way. You're fine. Yo, yo, I'll pick you up tomorrow at eight. <laughs> The worst. <laughs> the worst. Thank you. That the was great. Worst. By the worst, you mean the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, so Sasha, for coming on our show. Oh, man, this thanks was so great. Much for having me. This was the best. Yay. And we're that totally so having you back because I cannot wait to talk True Beverly Hills Beverly as well as School Ties. Yes, yeah, we absolutely will. We're going to find a link and I'll do my Rocky impression for True Beverly Hills. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be great. Do patches. We don't need no stinking patches. I will. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Patches we don't need. Patches. We don't need no stinking patches. Patches. Well, we don't need no stinking patches. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Where can we can find you, Sasha? Can. Aside from Summer Movie Report on Screen Junkies yeah. and Collider TV Talk, right? Collider TV Talk, uh, Schmoes No on Thursdays. Mm-hmm. And Fridays, I host FX Movie Download. God, it sounds like I have a lot of jobs. You do. I know. And then on Twitter and Instagram, at Sasha Pearl Raver. And if you ever just want to call for me out in the word woods, my code name is Sausage Perv Craver. <laughs> 
Is that serious? It, it, that happened on uh, <laughs> on TV Fights Championship. Somebody was like, so- they tried to say Sasha and ended uh-huh. up saying Sausage. And then they tried to say Pearl Raver and ended up saying Perv Raver. And then Ryan from Screen Junkies was like, it should be Perv Craver. And I was like, well, I don't crave pervs, but I am a perv. <laughs> and I crave a lot of things like burritos and donuts. So, yeah, yeah there you go. Sausage, wow. Perv Craver. I you say it three times in the mirror, I pop up. I Whoa. do have to say, when you're on TV and or movie fights, I think you're one of the best fighters. Whoa, like, you're thanks. so good. And the speed rounds, like, she uh. is like a force to be reckoned with in the speed round. That's very Love sweet it. because in movie fights, I fully tanked. And at the end of my speed <laughs> round, I was like, just give him the point. Like, my brain <laughs> imploded and I couldn't. It's I c- hard. It's hard. It's but hard. thank you. That's very sweet of you. And you got amazing trivia knowledge. You've been on movie games. You won oh, movie yeah. games. Won movie games with Juwan, who I love. Yes. Juwan nice. Guillory, who... Hey, if anybody here is listening, I want a Friday Night Lights montage of all of his extra work. Oh, yes. I want to make yes. this happen. Oh help us. <laughs> help and us then out we'll there. we'll just tweet him and be like, what's happening? Yeah. I did not authorize this. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I wanted to happen. Okay. And okay, winning producer, yes. Jawan Guillory yes. in Friday Night Lights. It's yes. happening. It's <laughs> happening, guys. Amazing. Stacey, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at SOHoward2012. You can just live tweet movies all the time. All That's day, it. all night. Yep, all day, all night. Mm-hmm. 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 And then pictures of, like, Van Damme. Uh, b- random <laughs> pictures of Jean-Claude Van Damme, who is my spirit animal and an amazing human being, and wears, uh, like, hats with his initials on it. And JCVD, like, wouldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's all about the hashtag. Kumate. Kumate. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, my, uh, he's, my, he's my foreign Gary Busey, shall we say okay. that. Just kind of obsessed with him a little bit. So where can we find you, Miss You Katie? can find me every goddamn day on Twitter. I am there all the time, guys. Yeah. I need to get off of Twitter. No, but never. This is how I meet people. Yeah. yeah. Sasha wouldn't be here without Twitter. I loved yeah. it. It's true. Okay. You know what? Something just occurred to me. I have yes. another bone to pick with striptease. Okay. What? Let's At get on it. At one point, <laughs> she calls CNN, uh-huh. and they pick up, and she says, news desk, please. And they go, just a moment. And they literally put her through the news desk. What? <laughs> like, like on air? Yeah. That really bothered me. But you know what? I feel like that's ancient Twitter. Like huh. that's old Twitter. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how it used to work. To me, more we're called and say CNN news desk, and now it's just at Miss Movies. What yeah. you doing, girl? You still up? Ask me anything. <laughs> yeah. Ask me a question. That's I right. Why would you do that? You can still reach them. Uh, so Sasha gives me good questions for Ask Me Anything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you all for listening. We will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Six Degrees of Feature Film is produced by Stacey Howard and me. Special thank you to Ken Knapsack for our intro and Matt Brown for our artwork. 